Today we are going to study the book published by Navyana, B. R. Ambedkar's writings on Brahminical patriarchy against the madness of Manu, selected and introduced by Sharmila Rege. <coughs> In this book, you will find an introduction is entitled Towards a Feminist that introduction is there that Ambedkar, Bhim Rao Rauti, Ambedkar is the greatest feminist and this is the discussion which is going on in this first chapter which is also an introduction and this introduction is from it starts with the page number 1 to uh, 56 then we come to section 1 and this is what is there you are able to see on the screen caste as endogamy the inextricable link between caste and violence against women so endogamy you know uh, endogamy endogamous is endogamy means sagotra uh, generally uh, this is a very common term we, we hear in india gotra system gotra system lineage system and this is endogamy means sagotra caste is endogamy the inextricable link between caste and violence against women. Caste in India, their mechanism, genesis and development, a research paper in which Ambedkar seeks to establish caste as a product of sustained endogamy, was written in 1916 at Columbia University for anthropology seminar of Dr. A. A. Goldenweiser and eventually published in the Indian Antiquary in 17, 1917. In 1913, Assisted by the scholarship from Maharaja Sayaji Rao of Baroda, Ambedkar had enrolled as a student of Faculty of Political Science at Columbia University, United States. In this essay, Ambedkar critiques the essentialization of caste and seeks to establish its knowability as a, theori as a theoretical practical problem. Specifically, he seeks to understand intermarriage restriction social relations and rerouting of caste structure in news, uh, new space. In contrast to the anthropological equation of caste to race in his time, Ambedkar countered cultural hegemon hegemonicity not withstanding racial difference among India's distinction as a nation. So the problem as it were was to explain exactly how this homogeneous culture has splintered turned into neat in previous, partial, and how caste involved. To start, he brackets the origin of intellectuals' positions on caste formation by his light with regard to existing colonial discourse on race and cultural evolution, biography and origin, more than justifiable slant anthropologist ideas such that color either gained undue influence. Or occupation, migration, and new beliefs are located at the very core of caste formation. For instance, when gripped by the uh, notion of jatis as isolated unit, caste studies were blind to the crucial point that caste was a system constituted by interdependent components and their composition forming an integrated whole. This led to the misdiagnosis uh, of sim uh, symptoms such as the absence of mixing uh, with other caste as causes. Here is drawing attention to sociologists and historians S. V. Ketkar's formulation is much more than Ambedkar's endorsing a native position. Rather, he illustrates, illuminates the openness that allows Ketkar to examine caste in relation to their entire system of caste. Furthermore, he reasons that caste to uh, caste's two characteristics, intermarriage prohibition and membership by uh, autogeny, as Ketkar's outline flanked the same coin. In other words, endogamy absence of intermarriage was the essence of the caste system. Ambedkar goes on to make extra domestic comparison with the United States as racial endogamy did not lead to caste formation. Unlike India, where racially mixed, culturally hegemon hegemonous people were artificially divided into fixed units of caste. In so doing, he attempts to establish endogamy as a characteristic so peculiar to caste that is span and sustain a range of mechanism in the development of structure we know as the caste system. While primarily concerned with how caste developed, Ambedkar's discussion of endogamy also defines an important shift in social relations. Endogamy effectively superimposed the existing practice of exogamy 
that he maintained was the elemental law of primitive societies including those in subcontinent how did this uh, how did this super and there is a footnote ambedkar's are uh, probably referring to the practice related to purity in pollution as new beliefs that were being given undue importance in the explanation of origins of caste system so uh, how did this a uh, superimposition actually occur and how was the marriage circle formed practically speaking it was an issue of a uh, parity between marriageable units men and women and how to maintain it by this framing caste within gender differences that had uh, determined the value of surplus man and surplus woman ambedkar was laying the base for what was probably speaking a feminist take on caste we learned that the surplus woman is disposed of in one of the two ways when sati banning a woman on her husband's pyre was not possible enforced in in, in de, uh, degraded widowhood was uh, pressed into service of course male superiority among groups did not allow a surplus man or a widower to be subject to the same treatment because losing a man was losing labor and depleting a uh, group members and problem was resolved by marrying him to some one from non to yet marriageable group a more fe- uh, a moral fence scaled by institutionalizing girl child marriage it is precisely for this reason that ambedkar's view of caste was entrenched in endogamy which its prohibition uh, or intermarriage provides basic framework for the development of caste structure regarding endogamy outcome ambedkar maintained that scholars have spent more time charting how sati child marriage and enforced widowhood uh, occurred social value than investigating their origin here he is no doubt highlighting a double maneuver by which brahmanical ideology both preserved and eulogized the very practice that in graded women in ambedkar's formulation three operations central to the origin and development of the caste came to light intra group organization of reproduction violence control of surplus women asexuality and legitimizing control practice through ideology so uh, these are significant points uh, and i would like to highlight here uh, you know what ambedkar is saying that in ambedkar's formulation three operational central to the origin and development of caste came to light intra group organization of reproduction a violence control of surplus women sexuality and legitimizing control practice through ideology these are the three reasons which actually uh, talk about the caste how this formulation of caste occurred and i hope you will remember this i repeat again because uh, this is actually very significant so let me just uh, take it as a Uh, i repeat these points again in a maker's formulation three operations central to the origin and development of caste came to light intra group organization of reprodu- reproduction violent control of surplus women sexuality and legitimizing control practice through ideology promising to explain the exact process at a later date ambedkar maintained that caste is enclosed caste and that brahmins were first class to raise the walls of endogamy a custom that non brahmin certainly emulated though not strictly he ruled out imposition by lawgivers caste existed prior to manu divide divine dispensation and of the social growth as a reason for the spread of endogamy his argument that some closed doors others found them closed drawn on french sociologist gabriel tarets a law of imitation in an effect to show that the practice of imitation of endogamy flowed into high to lower level and that the extent of imitation varied in adversely uh, in proportion to caste proximity where where is caste closer to brahmin imitated all three customs those further away pursued only those belief present in the caste principle moreover we learned that enclosed and endogamy were always under threat of violation and invo- innovation and prescribed option of penalties particularly excommunication lead to formation of new castes in focusing on endogamy ambedkar is essentially drawing attention to the inferior status of women within the caste uh, group that he claims produced two significant results firstly the surplus man and surplus woman received differential treatment or ambedkar posits a man as a maker of injection is most often above them all secondly because ga- because gendered violence became common and na- na- and naturalized caste were regarded as born not made thus making them and en- automatically 
exclusionary by this sati and enforce the integrated widowhood because chief mean to disposing the surplus practices this caste closer to brahmin replicate variously resulting in male superiority in all castes across hierarchy it is for this reason that ambedkar so caste exclusionary violence and subjugation of women inherited in the very process that lead to caste formation in discussing ambedkar's take on sati one might recall the debate around roopkamar sati in De- devrala rajasthan 18- 1987 ironically feminists condemning the event found themselves at the receiving end of multiple attacks the ensuing debate among academic feminists and sociologists which rarely evoke ambedkar's views on sati or otherwise caught in the series of polarities between tradition and modernity rural and urban materialism and spirituality some held that the urban and elite slant of anti sati active was to prevent them from fully grasping the implications of rural sati especially the struggle of traditional communities to protect themselves from the homogenizing tendencies of indian nation state eminent critical a thinker ashish nandi for example while criticizing the interventions by women's group that catalyzed anti sati legislation the communication of sati prevention act 1987 also distinguished between sati in mythical time and sati in historical time namely between even uh, <coughs> ghatna and custom pratha this stands in uh, invited wide ranging criticism by feminist who felt he was condemning sati in seminal essays marking a signpost in the cultural history of india feminist scholars wait and sangari highlighted the creation of selective tradition of identifying the role of discursive and political process in making of tradition they suggested that uh, constitutions of patriarchies were central to the formation of indian tradition the making and remaking of indian nation and the demarcation of the boundaries of religion caste and community the feminist insight was significant in posing a multiple uh, of uh, patriarchies and underlying how the multiple patriarchies could be both uh, colluding and competing one stand in agreement with feminist who is in mapping the selective tradition of sati demystifying homogeneous conceptions of tradition in rural india however given the discursive silence of ambedkar's theory that caste formation stem from the complex of caste violence and subjected of women brahminical patriarchy in its capacity as a dominant structure of social violence was overlooked by both nandi and feminists to their circuit not all academics have resisted the strength of ambedkar's writing according to sociologist vivek kumar are uh, reduced reduced reducive re, reducive reading of ambedkar's means his potential as an alternative position in existing discourses sev- Uh, severely undervalued feminist anthropologist kamla uh, vishwa vishveshwaran holds that receiving ambedkar's comparative work on caste and race would relieve caste history of anthropological conception uh, conceptionalism and indian nationalism for their part french political scientist christopher jeffer lord and feminist sociologist kalpana uh, kanabiran kanabiran have critiqued three generations of sociological this regard of ambedkar's counter hegemonic theory of caste formation as for active influence ambedkar's identification of imitation has proposed the widely deployed a uh, heuristic concept of sanskritization in modern indian studies introduced some 40 later by mn shrinivas and these are the footnotes i'm reading see ashish nandi sati as prophet versus sati as a spectacle the public debate on roop kumar's death in js a hole sati blessing and the curse new york oxford university press see kumkum sangari and sudesh vai institution belief ideological uh, ideologies widow emolation in contemporary rajasthan economic and political weekly <laughs> derivation notwithstanding uh, kanna biran locates a significant gap between ambedkar and shrinivas firstly in vintage uh, and objectives and secondly in that shrinivas underplaying the ingrained violence of caste suggesting in varna scheme harijan harijans pollute uh, instantaneously eliminates any possibility of theorizing caste violence furthermore in this is in this reading low castes are more liberal in the sphere of marriage and are, are prone to emulate child marriage and enforces widowhood towards uh, upward mobility elsewhere this is a statement on how non brahmin caste in 
internalize brahmanical values and pertaining to women a reduced gender to the descriptive category in this analysis of caste in the changing position of Indian women. Srinivas writes that uh, Sanskritization was a process resulting in harshness towards women because marriage has to occur within the jati. Generally and its detail, these ideas which mass systematic and systemic violence sharply contrast with Ambedkar in which the origin of the caste system, its control of women were in, uh, in ineluctably intertwined. See Vivek Kumar situating Dalit in Indian sociology, sociological bullet. Uh, and Kamala Vishweshwaran, India in South Africa, counter gender, uh, counter genealogies of subaltern sociology, uncommon culture, racism, and re, re uh, articulation of cultural differences. See Christopher Jeffer Lord, Dr. Ambedkar, and Untouchability, Analyzing and Fighting Caste. Uh, <coughs> Kalpana Kannabiran, Sociology of Caste and Crooked Mirror, receiving Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's legacy, Economy and Political Weekly. I am and Srinivas, a note on Sanskritization and Westernization and the changing position of Indian women. A collected essay and uh, published by Oxford University Press. So this is what we uh, were discussing today. And in this article, uh, Ambedkar, uh, Shredla Reg is talking about the how this First of all, how this caste started and what is the definition given by caste, uh, Ambedkar <coughs> related to caste. How Ambedkar is trying to give three reasons and these are the uh, three reasons where Ambedkar is giving. Uh, these are the three reasons that on the basis of that caste is formulated. Ambedkar's formulation three operational central to the origin of the development of caste that is intra-group organization of reproduction a violent control of surplus women's sexuality and legitimizing control practice through ideology. So these are the three things and then there are a number of writers uh, has been uh, quoted here. So we will uh, discuss it later on. Thank you so much. Please subscribe the channel Dr. Anju Gurava for more chapters and discussions.